Hey guys, it's Raul again, and today I'm going to be doing my September wrap-up and October TBR all in one because I'm kind of already late putting up this video, so I figured I'd just do everything all at once. So let's just go ahead and jump right into it because this might be a little long. So the first book that I read in the month of September was Throne of Glass by Sarah J. Mass. I finally, finally, finally started this series. I know I've heard so many things on BookTube about this series, about how great it is, and I have heard really mixed things about this first book, and I do agree a lot on what everybody says on the mixed things about this book. It wasn't definitely my favorite book. Um, it was a little problematic. I mean, I think the main problem that I had with this book was the fact that the plot um, was a kind of a little muddled to kind of jump around a little bit. And for those of you who don't know, Throne of Glass is about the story about this woman called Selina Sardothian, and she's an assassin, and she's been imprisoned, and she is called upon by the king to compete in these trials and things to become the king's champion. Um, so there's a lot of other assassins and people that are kind of all competing together to um, win this privilege of being the king's assassin. So that's what the main plot is supposed to be. Um, the most problematic thing that I had with this book was the fact that that plot kind of was abandoned. I know a lot of the trials weren't what a lot of people were expecting it to be, definitely not for me. I know that she focused a lot on other things other than this main plot of the trials and that kind of thing, and I just, I don't know, it just, I wish we would have been able to see all of the trials, I wish the trials themselves that they did actually end up showing were a lot better than what they were. I know a lot of people have had problems with the fact that Selena in this, she doesn't really demonstrate why she's an assassin, why she's been in prison, I know she refers a lot to her past, and she kind of thinks about, well, you know, I would do this to this person, I would do that to that person. It doesn't really ever show her true colors of why she is the greatest assassin in the land. So those are, you know, problematic things just because I wish in this first book, Selena would have been a little bit more kick butt. I wish that she would have, you know, done kind of more assassin -y type things, and I wish that they would have really focused on the trials. Um, because they definitely didn't. I feel like Sarah J. Mass very quickly abandoned the whole trials plot and then just moved on to something else, which became kind of like a murder mystery, which is fine because I really, really love murder mysteries. So it became this whole murder mystery thing, which, you know, like I said, I was fine with, but I kind of still wish that I would have been able to see like all of the trials and kind of seen it all played out. And yeah, that was my main kind of issue with this. I still ended up giving it a 4 out of 5 stars because I still really enjoyed everything else that was kind of going on. Then after that, the second book that I read for the month of September was Crown of Midnight by Sarah J. Mass, and this is the second book in the Throne of Glass series, and holy crap, this was just so much better than the first one. If you guys have read the first one and have been put off for continuing this series, read the second one and kind of then decide if you want to keep going or not because the second one just gets so much better. I think the complaints and the plot kind of get fixed and everything kind of gets fleshed out a little bit more. Selena really, really shows her true colors in this one. She really shows why she is the greatest assassin in the land. I mean, she has no mercy over some of these people and gets really brutal, very graphic at some point. And I absolutely loved it. This second book was just so, so much better than the first one, and I ended up giving this one a 5 out of 5 stars. So I'm really looking forward to continuing on with this series, and like I said, if you guys were put off by the series and only read the first one, read the second one and then decide from there if you don't want to go, because this is just so much, so much better. Selena is just cemented as such an awesome character in this second book. Then after that, the next book that I read in the month of September was The Raven Boys, which is the first book in the Raven Cycle series. And this one I read as the random read-alongs book for the month of September. And I will link all of the pages down below for you guys. Goodreads group um, and the people who are hosting it, Kristen, Captain 9 x Sam from the Tomes, and Sarah Jane from The Book Life. All of their pages will be linked down below for you guys to check out the random read-alongs and their pages. And so this month we read The Raven Boys, and I did not love it as much as I wanted to. I still ended up giving it a 4 out of 5 stars, but it was because the kind of atmospheric kind of themes that were going on with this I really, really enjoyed. And this is about a story about a girl named Blue. Her
her family is all they're all psychics and she kind of meets this group of kids called the Raven Boys and she's told from a young age that she will be the cause of her true love's death. So she is scared to kind of, you know, meet other boys and fall in love because she keeps being told that she is going to be the cause of the death of her love, you know, the person he she loves. So she kind of stays away from boys, but then meets this group of boys and kind of, you know, becomes friends and starts really liking one of them and kind of things go from there. I really enjoyed the second half of this book. I felt like it started off a little bit slow for me and I read this while I was on vacation. So maybe that's why I wasn't paying too much attention because I wasn't in my regular kind of reading atmosphere that I normally am in, you know, sitting on the couch or on my bed, curled up, you know, in some blankets or something, and I was just in a different atmosphere. I was sitting in a hotel room when I started this book, so maybe that was it. Maybe that's why I wasn't paying too much attention at the beginning and got a little lost, but either way, halfway through the book, it really picked up really well. It got really creepy in some points, and I really, really enjoyed it. By the end, I really enjoyed the characters and the dynamics between all of them. You could really kind of see each one of the Raven Boys and their personalities and everything was kind of fleshed out a little a little bit better for me. So I really enjoyed it by the end and I'm looking forward to reading the next book in this series. Eventually, whenever it gets read, I'm assuming it'll be read again, the next book in the Random Readalongs group. So I'm excited to get to the next one at this point. Then the next book I read was part of my Hispanic Heritage Month reads. I will link the video that I made down below for you guys for the Hispanic Heritage TBR. So I won't get into too much detail, but it was The Brief and Wondrous Life of Oscar Wilde. I absolutely, absolutely loved this. It is a story about Oscar and kind of his life and his family and this curse that the Dominicans believe in called the Fuku. I absolutely loved this. I buddy read this with Sarai from Sarai Talks Books and it's the first buddy read that I've ever done and we just absolutely loved every minute of it. I think we were so proud of this book by the end because it's so Hispanic and we just loved it and we felt the that the two of us felt that if you aren't Hispanic or you didn't grow up in a Hispanic household, there are a lot of things in here that you might not understand. The author, Juno Diaz, uses a lot of kind of Spanish phrases, and you just won't understand it if you didn't really grow up in a Hispanic household, I feel, what these phrases are, because he doesn't really define them all. So I feel like some people will be lost and not really understand what it is that he's referring to, but I did, and I loved it, and I rated this a 5 out of 5 stars because I just thought it was so great story was so awesome and I will definitely be picking up more books by Juno Diaz after having read this book because it was just so amazing to me. I loved the narration. I loved the character. I love Oscar. I connected with him so well because he was kind of that kind of lonely boy outcast. Um, I just, I thought it was great. This was just, it was beautifully written. It was the story. Everything was just done so well. This definitely get, gave me a book hangover after I was done reading this because I just kept thinking about Oscar at the end of this book. It was just so wonderful. Such a great reading experience. Also doing the Buddy Roots that I So awesome. I will link her page down below for you guys to check out too. And the last book that I read in the month of September was Maximum Ride Volume 3 by James Patterson and R.A. Lee. I've been reading this book or this series you know for the last couple months if you guys have been following my videos and I've really been enjoying this. I didn't enjoy this volume as much as I did the other ones. I don't know. I think there was it wasn't as exciting and there was a part in the plot there that I got a little confused and wasn't really understanding where, like, something came completely out of left field. I was like, wait, no, this doesn't make any sense. So, I don't know. Either way, I gave it a four or five stars because I really, really enjoyed it. Um, kids with angel wings, that kind of thing, if you guys have been following my videos. I don't really want to get into too much detail because, like I said, it's volume three. So, you can't really get into too much plot with volume three because you will ruin volumes one and two. So I don't want to do that for you guys if you guys are interested in picking this up because it is a great um, series. This is the manga version, by the way. Um, so like, it reads really quickly. The artwork in here is awesome, as usual. So I loved it. Either way, 4 out of 5 stars. So moving on to my October TBR with October coming along and everything. It is my birthday month. It is Halloween at the end of the month. It is still Hispanic Heritage Month up until October 15th, so it is a pretty awesome month for me, and I'm really, really excited to pick up the books that I have on my TBR list. The first book that I am reading in the month of October that I'm already currently reading is Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. This book 
is absolutely amazing so far. For those of you who don't know, this takes place in the world of the Grisha, which is Lee Bardugo's other trilogy that she wrote. And this, I think, is supposed to be a duology. It is about six outcasts that kind of get together to do this heist. And that alone was intriguing enough. As a heist story in the world of the Grisha, I said, heck yeah, I need this. So far, I'm just absolutely loving it. This is so great. The characters, the world building, the pacing, is just, everything is just so great. The writing, I'm absolutely loving this book so far. I know that I am going to definitely finish this. Hopefully by this week is my goal. So, yeah, like I said, I'm absolutely loving it. If you guys have read The Grisha Trilogy by Lee Bardugo, definitely give this one a chance. Even if you did not enjoy that one that much, because I feel like I'm enjoying this one more than I did the Grisha Trilogy when I started reading that one, and I still ended up loving that one, so definitely the first book that I will be finishing in the month of October. Two books that I am going to be reading for the month of October are part of the Hispanic Heritage Month TBR, so I won't get into too much detail with them because I already did, you know, like I said, a separate video for it, which I will link down below for you guys. And the first one is Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe by Benjamin Ali de Sainz. I've currently started this book. I'm only about like seven, 65 pages or so into this. But I'm really enjoying the story so far about these two boys and kind of a coming of age story. I'm really liking it. Writing is really good so far. And you will hear more of my thoughts, obviously, in my wrap up about this book. And then the next book that I'm picking up is The Strain by Guillermo del Toro and Chuck Hogan. Another book that I mentioned, like I said, in my Hispanic Heritage TBR. So I won't get into too much detail. But I feel like this is perfect for the month of October, not only because Guillermo del Toro is Hispanic, but also because it deals with vampires, and it's really creepy, and I heard it's very violent, so I'm really excited because it also fits in with the theme of October and the creepiness that goes around October. Then after that, the next book that I will be reading is a buddy read that I will be doing with Cherie from Cherie Lampley, and I will link her page down below for you guys, and that is Night Film by Marissa Pessel. I'm super, super excited to get into this one because I've heard really, really great things. This book is really heavy. Um, so I'm hoping that I can get through this book in a fairly decent time and I don't hold Cherie back because I'm a pretty slow reader. But this is about a movie director whose daughter dies and I feel like it was kind of ruled out as a suicide but the police aren't believing it's a suicide. I'm not really 100% sure. I know that it's kind of the investigation that takes place around this murder of this girl. So I'm really excited because like I said I absolutely love murder mysteries. So this seems like it's going to be something great, something wonderful, and I'm going into this with high hopes because, like I said, I've heard great things about this, and I really love Murder Mysteries, and I'm going to be doing another Buddy Read, so I'm really excited for this one. Then after that, the next book that I will be picking up is another Buddy Read that I will be doing with Dices19. I will link her page down below for you guys, and that is Rat and Ruin, the first book in the Rat and Ruin series, or also known as the Benny Amora series. For those of you who don't know, Benny Amora, I guess, is very popular character um so this book is about benny who is turning 15 and i guess in, at the age of 15 they kind of have to decide kind of what jobs to take place this is you know takes place in a post-apocalyptic world it's kind of obviously been overrun by zombies so he is not sure what job he wants to do he doesn't want to hunt zombies like his brother does so he's kind of torn what he wants to do and kind of what he wants to decide to do so i'm still really excited to get into this one it's, it's supposed to be kind of sort of a coming of age story but with zombies which i'm still really excited to do and also excited because it's also another buddy read this month for me so like i said this i'm going in with Somewhat high hopes for this series because I've heard really, really good things about this series also. So, so yeah, guys, that is it for my September wrap-up and my October TBR. If you guys have read any of these books, please let me know. Comment down below. We will talk back and forth. Please no spoilers for the ones that I haven't read, but the ones that I have read, please gush about them as much as you want if you'd like to. So, yeah, guys, that is it for this video, and I will see you guys next time.